I'm uh, very grateful to be here. I do recognize some faces, and it's, uh, it's just great. So um, my background is I've been at Stanford for 20 years. Uh, my undergraduate degree was in industrial engineering and operations research, and my master's was in occupational therapy. So um, as an industrial engineer, it's, it's about you know managing the environment. It's uh, making things lean. It's making things uh, appropriate. Um, human factors. How do you interact with your environment? As an OT, um, I'm working with individuals to help you achieve your level of independence or satisfaction with tasks that are meaningful to you. Whether it's a dressing task or a meal prep task or a typing or functional mobility, you know, you know, what's important for you is what's is the goal that I'm trying to help you achieve. So. No. Next slide. Okay. So again, just the basic definition. I apologize for the white font. I realized this morning um, that it was not, it would not be very easy to see. So I did some back lighting with the black squares. And so you're going to see a range of colors. But basically, um, uh, activities of daily living, which is um, what we call, what we call the first. Um, important aspects of care include self-feeding, grooming and dressing, bathing and toileting, and functional mobility. So th these are things that we work with individuals. We help them set goals towards these types of tasks. Okay, the next um, top, the next title is called instrumental ADLs. So those tasks include um, managing medication, writing, typing, managing transportation. So are you driving or are you accessing community on public transportation? Um, shopping and preparing meals, housework and home repair and gardening. So I work at Stanford in the outpatient neuro rehabilitation clinic and I spent most of my career inpatient, neurology, neurosurgery, neurocritical care. And an outpatient, you know, everyone is just, uh, has a little more healing under their belt or, or they're just uh, able to really attend to some um, great functional goals. And so these are the types of goals that we're working towards and, and you get to choose. So um, one thing that I talk about when I work with some of my patients with CMT, and again, I work with um, a range of individuals after stroke, MS, um, with Parkinson's, after traumatic brain injury, you know, you name it. Um, but what I, I do notice is that it's really important to talk about movement and positioning strategies. You know, so whatever the task is, are you working with or against gravity? So um, are you, can you use other muscle groups? Can you use potentially your hips to close the door versus extending your arm? It's really dialing the task and the activity, just absolutely assessing every component of movement so that you maximize your efficiency and you, and you, and you are integrating those principles of what we call energy conservation. So energy conservation is not about sitting around and, and not really moving. It's about doing all the things that are meaningful to you, but doing it in such an efficient way that for sure you get to the end of the day and you can still go and do an activity with friends or family. So, um, you know, think about physics, adding levers, um, using hand over hand to generate more force, to close things, um, to, to stomp on things, you know, put things on the floor, close it that way. It's like really just thinking totally outside, um, outside the box, sliding things across surfaces, um, supporting with your body versus always going for the, the grip. Um, Sometimes just standing over an object with your arm in extension. I do a lot. I'm very physical. I normally am jumping around the clinic. But really just posting your arm and dropping your body in order to, you know, close something. That, again, is a form of that's being efficient. Um, so, again, thinking about principles of energy conservation and for sure movement. So sometimes we, uh, I'll talk and we'll play around with different kinds of splints. So when you're doing, for example, self-feeding and meal prep, um, you want to exercise uh, increased caution due to reduced ability to feel heat, cold, and pain. For sure, you want to protect the thumb. And uh, there's ways to actually maintain better grip on things by using pieces of Dyson. And I did bring a box of Dyson. It's this fabulous sticky stuff. And you can buy a box of it, and you can cut cut small pieces, large pieces, you can put it anywhere, it'll, it'll hold things for you. Again, conserving some energy and just 
really saving your muscles for the tasks that are important to you. Um, so I do have a range of different types of thumb stabilizer splints and uh, just other types of splints that will actually pull your thumb into opposition. When you do that, you can increase that tip pinch or that the way you can grasp things. So if you pull your thumb into what we call opposition and, and you can even uh, use a strap with certain splints to connect it to the other side, you can, you can get, that's a couple of pounds of force and you can get a little more work done and to whatever task you're, you're doing. So we, I work a lot on figuring those things out. So again, this is this whole presentation, I have a lot of pictures up on, this, on the uh, slides. So there's foam grip. Um, you can, so these are examples of different foam grip. There's large bore, small bore, um, and you just cut pieces and you can add it onto your tools. Uh, a long time ago, I um, worked with an individual who was a makeup artist and needed to add uh, the pieces of foam onto all those very small wooden brushes so that that person could continue doing her job and the task that was meaningful to her. Um, using long straws, you don't always have to pick the cup up. You can just leave it on the table and use a long straw perhaps. Um, using lightweight cups with handles. So again, your hand, your hand is, is in the cup, which is one way of conserving because the weight falls here versus using this type of a grip force. Um, furniture risers, so there's a, the gentleman in that lower right hand corner. If it's difficult to, to get off of low surfaces, remember height is your friend. If you increase the height of your chairs or your couches or your bed a few inches, um, again, going back to physics, it makes it a little easier for that sit to stand task. Um, increasing, okay, and then rolling tray tables. So if, instead of carrying everything around, just buy a rolling tray table and roll around your house. You can buy them at Bed Bath & Beyond or Target, and, you know, and, and sometimes that's helpful and a little safer, especially if there's some issues with balance and, insta you know, managing, you can hang onto the table and, and get from A to B. Adaptive kitchen aids, they, they're out in the market. There are one-touch jar openers and one-touch electric can openers. The jar opener attaches to the glass. The other set of arms attach to the lid. You press the button, it counter rotates and opens it for you. There's a can opener that slices the can off. Um, use thinking about stovetop potholder brackets. Again, you're not holding the, sto the pot. The bracket's holding the pot, and all you have to focus on is stirring. Um, thinking about cutting boards with vice grips and spikes that can hold the food for you. And uh, ergonomic knives. I love the ergonomic knives. I do have a few different ones. I, I brought an example of the little serrated one, but potentially that's not helpful. Again, some of these things are still not helpful, but you have to trial different ones. This is a little guillotine one where you just hold it and then rock back and forth. And maybe that would be easier for you given how your hand is functioning. So again, thinking about energy conservation, activity analysis of everything you do, how many different ways are there to make a cup of coffee? Okay, a lot of different ways. You can use a coffee maker with a glass carafe, or you can use something super lightweight like pour over, and those little white things actually are plastic and $3.99. And you know, potentially that you're reducing a few steps, fewer steps, fewer clicks, whatever it takes, thinking about how you're moving about your environment. Lots of adaptive tools for, um, for hands that might be you know, getting weaker. There's different kinds of scissors that if you just use a gross grasp, it'll recoil and open for you. So instead of uh, you know, worrying about that extension, you can just gently do a grip and then it'll open. Thinking about cutting bags open versus the, the grip strength required to open a bag of pita chips. Cut things, stab things, um, drop things with your elbow. You know, kind of be creative with your movements and making things better. Um, key holders, that's another thing. So that lateral pinch can be really tricky to turn a key. There are adaptive tools where you can load your keys in and then that person has that much larger um, plastic. Can you see it? So then, um, and then you have a lo much larger lever arm for rotating the key, and that can be easier. And then they flip back inside, and it's kind of tidy in your um, bag. The other one is an adaptive nail clipper. Many, many times I have individuals saying, I just, you know, I can't cut my nails. It's so tough to do nail clipping. 
And so that's just one example. There are many, many different types of adaptive nail clippers. Um, and all you have to do is go into Google, and if you type in adaptive whatever you're looking for, and do images, you'll see loads of different ideas, and you can go on the web and shop on Amazon or wherever. Um, and so again, it's very helpful kind of doing these tasks for yourself and, and, um, and getting the job done. This is one example. Uh, anyone in here who enjoys gardening, there are many different types of adaptive um, gardening tools. There's something called Active Hands, which is this lower screen, this lower picture, where it's actually the glove. This is kind of a, not really a good example. This is not an active hands, but this is similar, where you, your whole hand goes in, and then the strap goes around the actual tool. So you don't have to spend all that energy with the grip strength, but it actually keeps your hand on it. You can use active hands for doing very lightweight weightlifting or a, a variety of other um, tasks. And then you can see the, the other kinds of tools. And then the one here, uh, if the person's digging or raking, it actually goes up to the forearm and attaches there. Um, Self-care and dressing, again, thinking differently. The gentleman over there, he doesn't have, it looks like he has a shirt with buttons, but they're actually Velcro. They're little Velcro tabs that are underneath. And, um, and hit the pants, it looks like they're buttons, but they're, they're, um, they're Velcro. So, uh, you know, you still have a little um, accessibility to dressing independently, and, and that might be meaningful for you. The uh, zipper, uh, it's actually magnetic, so no longer that fine tip pinch required to thread those things together. And then just thinking about for women, you know, okay, paradigm shift, we're still gonna look good, just a one-piece dress versus multiple pieces, buttons, pants, belts, you know. Sometimes um, thinking just other ideas that'll take a little less energy. There are adaptive tools for doing buttons. I have a few examples of the button hook tool, um, Velcro shoes, there are lace locks. The, the, red, the red laces, those are actually elastic, and those lace locks will keep your laces tied. Um, so I have some examples of those, and that only requires a little bit of a, a lateral pinch to, to glide that up and down, may be helpful for you. And larger loops for your zippers. Of course, using electric razors, electric toothbrushes, again, energy conservation. You're gonna get the job done, your teeth will be clean, and then you can uh, just use the tool that makes it a little easier for you. How about drying your hair? There's a way, there's a tabletop vice grip that will hold the hair dryer for you. And um, maybe that's even a safety point where you're hanging onto the counter with one hand and doing the task with the other. For bathing and toileting, if transferring in and out of tub shower is, is somewhat hazardous um, because of the balance and strength, there are so, so many different types of durable medical equipment for your bathroom environment. And this is a very uh, kind of a high-end fancy one where you're in a rolling shower chair and then you can roll into the bathroom, lock up to those rails, and the chair will glide over and you just may need assistance or you can do it independently. Bring your legs into the tub with you. Um, and then of course using a commode for that increased height and um, arm support. Other types of durable medical equipment, grab bars. So now the uh, manufacturers are getting uh, really clever with their design options. So no longer are they just the, that one bar. They've created grab bars that look like toilet paper dispensers and they're somewhat stylish. So you think it's just a fancy toilet paper dispenser, but it's a real grab bar that's properly installed into the studs that will provide a lot of safety um, for those transfers. The other one for folks that are renting or don't really want to, want to be drilling into their marble or tile or whatever, um, we kind of talk, sometimes I talk about transfer poles. So this is just a tension bar from the ceiling down to the floor and it can be utilized to transfer into a tub. Some people put them next to their Barco lounger. Some people put them adjacent to their bed. Some people put them in that one step that goes from the kitchen down into the sunken living room, but they can't put a railing and they need that extra handhold. So you really just think um, creatively and as long as you have a ceiling and a floor, you can use one of those transfer bars. Right. Um, and yep. 
some little, this is kind of, this is an example of assistive technology. There are some wireless controlled outlets. So if the thought about getting up and walking over and turning out lights or doing other various tasks is, um, is kind of difficult, uh, potentially you could just put these devices into outlets and then you would have this remote, this button unit. And so whatever's plugged in to that, which is plugged into your outlet, wherever you are, you could turn it on or off. And that might be helpful, again, energy conservation. The other one is actually, it's called a J-pad and it's to toggle through your iPad. Um, not that, just again, another idea of managing, you know, not having to use your hand or various things. Typing versus talking versus writing. There's, if, t if typing is um, something you enjoy doing, but sometimes you're a bit tired and it's a bit of a hardship, there's dragon dictation, you can use Siri. And then I do have examples of the pen again, which is that pen um, where you can drop your finger over versus that dynamic tripod where uh, most people would be writing. And um, some people find it helpful, some people don't. Again, there's so many tools out there. This is just a, a little drop in the bucket. But just to give you an idea that, you know, if there's a task or leisure activity, for sure there's a way to adapt it so that you can continue to do an aspect of that. Um, and then, of course, basic lifestyle of wellness to, you know, you want to do all these things, you want to integrate a tool, but overall you want to maintain your stretching, so stretch regularly. Exercise daily with low impact exercises and, you know, can always work on improving your stability. Exercising your core muscles, so we do that in rehab, we have a big gym, we have occupational therapy, physical therapy, and for individuals that come to our clinic that need speech therapy, we have speech as well, but so um, the PT and OT, for sure, we're working on core muscles, um, aspects of upper body strength, range of motion. Um, we can get prescriptions um, for aquatic exercise classes, and we have a huge list for the entire Bay Area and beyond. Yoga, low impact. And again, here's an example of that active grips. I mean, that's a big dumbbell that guy's hanging on to, but you can use that active hands to hold on to something maybe lighter without worrying about you losing your grip and it dropping on your toe. Um, and it can, of course, recumbent and then seated exercise is always helpful. And uh, energy conservation, again, see the book is on the stand, so the, it may be a heavy, heavy book and you can still enjoy it by doing these types of things. And even thinking um, photography with a remote trigger and if the, it's difficult to press the thumb button, there's always other ways to press it by pressing it against different parts of your body. Anyway, I know I ran through a, an enormous range of <laughs> adaptive tools, but that was the point of today for me. And um, does anyone have any questions? No. Feel free to come up and take a look at some of the items on the table. And let me see. Oh, we're ending really kind of early. <laughs> Hello? No questions? Okay, yeah. Yeah. The J pad, yeah, I can go back. So the J pad for. I Oh, repeat the question. Um, the question was, could I review um, the function of the J-pad for iPads, which is right here. It's the square with the green and the red button and the toggle switch. So this tool can be connected wirelessly, or Bluetooth actually, excuse me, Bluetooth, to your iPad. So for example, if you had your iPad on a, up on a stand or you had it somewhere that you could see it without having to hold it and do all this extra movement, you could scroll through the apps using between the toggle switch and then selecting with the green. Yeah, so it's, it's, not, very, it's not very big. Um, 
and you would and uh, there's a way to just go through the process to go into your adaptive adaptability settings on your iPad and then that way it talks to this device and you can program pushing to the left is this way pushing to the right is this way and when you want to select it you just very gently hit the green and then when you want to use home you could very gently hit the red button and you can even take pictures if you wanted to use it and then take a picture you could just do it all by using this j-pad which you could hold very closely to your body versus do, doing extension and individual finger movements i have a question about um the workplace. Yeah. So not like at my job, they do uh, ergonomic evaluation. Yeah, we do so those. By law, what does an employer have to provide or not provide? They have to provide an. Uh, oh, the I can't remember. Uh, the question was um, in terms of doing an ergonomic assessment, what does the employer have to provide? Um, was that the question? Yeah. So there. I think it actually depends on the size of the company in terms of the um, the amount of money that it, that it takes to make the appropriate adaptations for you. But for example, um, the the requirement is to um, to adapt your computer station, your chair, accessibility to the work environment, so that you can do that relatively independently. And if they can't. Um, then they need to provide some type of an assistant to facilitate that process for you. But mostly it, com it comes to keyboards and chairs and desks and mobile arm supports. Um, but it also can, ad adapting the environment can mean that you would have op an opportunity or permission to be in a quieter environment and or you would have the opportunity to work from home potentially. So there's, you know, there's different ways to provide adaptation. It could be less hours, um, some at work, some at home, using uh, the web, you know, using a conference call versus driving in for certain types of meetings. I mean, it can be an enormous range of things from actual environment to workflow process. Did that answer it? Yes, yeah. thank you. It is overwhelming, and um, oh, <laughs> you can tell I'm really not good at this. <laughs> the question is, do I have a keyboard or a mouse brand that I would recommend? Um, the answer is no, because uh, everyone's different, and so um, knowing you know the position of your hand, your particular strength, um, you know, uh, it's really kind of size of hand and and your abilities that there are so many different options. There's clamshells, there's roller balls, there's touch pads, there's micro toggles, and there, the selection is, so it would be coming in and working with someone and then identifying your abilities and then making the tool fit you versus you adapting to one brand. Okay, if someone asks a question, I promise I'll remember to repeat it. 